A handful of Civil War veterans still meet in the shade of a mango tree to sing the anthem of what was once their country, the land of the rising sun. Nigeria marks 50 years since the declaration of an independent republic of Biafra plunged the country into a civil war amidst renewed tensions and fresh calls for a separate state. The main pro-independence groups, the indigenous people of Biafra and the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra have called for a day of reflection today. People in the southeast have been urged to stay at home, but for these veterans, it's an occasion to remember their victories and disappointments. I've been taught that freedom is not given, it was taken. So we had the zeal and as young as we were, we don't care. Whatever we lay hands, we're okay. But the bullet was our, our sister, was our brother, our companion. The rebel province in southeast Nigeria declared independence on the 30th of May in 1967, triggering a bitter civil war that would leave more than one million dead, most of them from famine and disease. The head of Nigeria's military government, General Yakubu Gowan, vowed to crush the secessionists within three months and imposed a ruthless blockade. In the end, it would take him nearly three years to achieve his aim. The enemy would prove tough opponents for the federal troops, despite being outnumbered and under-equipped. Many preferred to die rather than surrender. But in 1970, after nearly three years of fighting, Biafran soldiers laid down their arms. The government of the Republic of Biafra now wish to make the following declaration. That we affirm we are loyal Nigerian citizens and accept the authority of the Federal Military Government of Nigeria. That we accept the existing administrative and political structure of the Federation of Nigeria. The only authentic identity for an African is his tribe. I'm a Nigerian because the white man created Nigeria and gave me that identity. The Biafra War was brought to the fore in 2013 with a highly acclaimed film, Half of the Yellow Sun, based on the 2006 novel of the same name by Nigerian feminist author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. She said that writing a novel about the civil war which devastated her home region helped people reconnect with a past that most no longer discussed. Half of the Yellow Sun means so much to me in so many ways, and, and I mean emotionally. I mean, it's a, book I'm, it's a book I'm very proud of, but it's also a book that has a lot of emotional meaning for me. Mostly because I, I talked to family, my grandfather's died in Biafra, so it was deeply emotional for me. I don't think it's particular to Biafra and Nigeria. I think this is what happens for a generation that experiences trauma, that usually it's the next generation who can start to talk about it. Because it's, I don't think I could have written this book if I had lived in Biafra. It, it just, you know, doing the research left me with a kind of just incredible admiration and, and awe for people who survived Biafra and also a kind of great, great sadness. In the last two years, there has been growing unrest and calls for a new secessionist movement for Biafra to take form. In November 2015, Mandy Kanu, the director of Radio Biafra and founder of the band IPOB Group, which the Nigerian government has accused of being seditious and of broadcasting hate speech, was arrested and investigated for terrorism financing. This hate speech specifically relates to the radio station calling for a separate state of Biafra. Thousands of protesters have since taken to the streets to demand his release. And last year, Amnesty International accused Nigeria's security forces of killing at least 150 pro-Biafra protesters and injuring hundreds since August 2015. Kanu has since been released on bail after 18 months in jail, which has not deterred him to continue his mission. Our ultimate goal is freedom. Referendum is the path we've chosen to take to get Biafra. And that referendum, as I said earlier, is what we must have. There is no alternative. We'll do everything within our powers to make sure there's a referendum. Nigeria has recently grappled with other issues, including that of the missing Chibok girls, a fragile economy and an equally fragile president whose failing health has caused much concern amongst the public in recent weeks. Many today will speak on the legacy of the Biafra movement, 
a movement that intends to revive a new lease of life into a much overlooked event in West African history. Adam Aminu, The Report.